Shut up and welcome back to my Instagram. I keep saying Instagram, it's YouTube, YouTube. Shut up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for checking in today. And I'm excited for this video because we're doing another tutorial on Lightroom. Now, we will be using the CC version, the newer version, not the classic CC, just the newer Creative Cloud. I'm gonna be doing everything on my computer here, but if you have your phone, you can also follow along. So what I recommend is if you're watching this on a computer, you don't necessarily have to have Lightroom open up on another panel or anything, have it up on your phone because you get the idea out of here. So what we're doing today is we're talking about probably the most important thing in Lightroom. Okay, second most important thing. Most important thing are filters, obviously, because I mean, who doesn't use a filter? Hashtag no filter, don't do that. No one does that anymore, no one cares. You need a filter on your images, it's just the way it goes. No, light, light is so important, shaping lights is important, but we're not gonna focus in on that. That's more composition. This is gonna be all the post-production. We're gonna go over the light panel in Lightroom. So this is a basic, basic tutorial. So if you're new to Lightroom, if you, you play around with it, but you kind of want to go deeper into it and get some ideas, this is gonna help you out. This is gonna be a short tutorial. <laughs> oh, how naive I was. And also look at that face, what a great frame. On light, if you're advanced, you're probably isn't for you unless you just want to hang out and see what I have to say. With that said, let's jump into Lightroom, pull it up on your phone, that's cool, but we're gonna go ahead and do it on the computer. Okay, so, so first up, I have a shout out to my friend Lauren at Keep Them Gates on Instagram for letting me use her again as my model. This is the picture that I took with an iPhone 10. I did use portrait mode so you have that blurred out background. So this is what the picture is gonna look like, basically straight. But now that I have it in Lightroom, you can see on the right hand side, I have lights right over here. And if you're using your phone, you'll see the light on there. So the first thing I wanna do is, in order to get light, it's really important to have a histogram open. I kinda of see that. So if we do Command-0, if you're on a Mac, and you have your histogram up here on the top right. Of course, we have our greens and our reds and our blues, but then that kind of gray, that's gonna be the white. And that's what we're gonna focus on. So the first thing, we're just gonna go down the list and make it super obvious. So first thing, exposure. We probably know what exposure is. We know how to do it, we've seen it. It raises those light levels, raises them up, lowers them down. So I raise it up, becomes super white, overdone, raise it down, it's too dark. But what's, what's cool to see is, this is when you wanna look at that histogram. On the top, you can see if I move my light up on my exposure, that histogram's moving. And it becomes so far when you have to the right that it kind of curves up and it just clips. If you're a musician, you know what clipping is as far as the sound getting cut off at a certain level. The same thing happens with picture here with the whites. There is so much white on my screen here that I lost detail completely. And that's what I'm seeing when the white goes all the way to the, the right. I have this line. So whenever you're messing with exposure, it's good to raise it or lower it sometimes, but you never want to raise it to a point where it starts clipping things. I get it to right about here. Now it's starting to clip. You can see that little green on the very bottom right. That's starting to go off. That's clipping just a little bit, probably because of the whites over here by the poster in the background. Lower that down just a little bit. Now we can see that all my colors are present. I haven't lost any detail in there. That's great. So that's exposure. Pretty straightforward. Next thing we're gonna go to contrast. Obviously, what is contrast? It's the difference between the whites and our blacks. If I raise up my contrast, we can see that it's making the darker is dark, the whiter is white. I'm gonna move it down, and now it's very flat looking. So this can give you kind of aesthetic, but again, let's look at a histogram to get an idea of what's happening under the hood. When I raise my histogram back to the middle, it's there, but if I'm gonna raise it up and inc increase it, I now see it's kind of pushing everything down. The middles are going out, and the blacks and the whites are going this way. I was gonna raise my whites and raise my blacks when I increase my contrast, and then it will shrink both of those if I go down. By doing this, you can see it's gonna kind of get more of a hill shape. Everything's getting kind of pushed up. So that's that, let's get back to the middle. Uh, of course, if you're in Lightroom, you can double click on the little circle to get it back to the center. Highlights, and this is where it can get confusing between well, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. What, what's the difference for them? Well, in order to understand highlights, we actually need to jump down to whites. White, obviously, the white part and the brightness of our pixel, essentially. So I raise up my white. Before you look at the image, check out the history on top. If I move that, I'm just moving that right side, really. Of course, the, the smaller parts and the blacks will have traces of white because unless it's completely pitch black, there will be some white in that. Now, if I go back to my exposure, let's look at that again. That's moving everything. Everything there is getting shifted over. With white, it's an exponential curve. Things that are closer to the right side will move faster than things that are closer to the left. And so this is how I'm affecting my whites. By using my white here, I can go ahead and move my histogram and the whites in there, left and right. Blacks, obviously the same thing. When I lower my blacks, so I'm making them darker, 
kind of think in reverse in a way. And if I raise my blacks up, everything gets shifted a little bit to the right. So that's white and black. So that makes a lot of sense. Whites will go ahead and move the white colors and raise the brightness of them. If you go ahead and lower the blacks, that obviously makes dark the darker color is more pronounced. If you look at highlights, if I raise up my highlights on the histogram here, you can see it's it's kind of moving things in a way. It looks like it, you can see things start to clip, which makes sense because things are getting brighter. They got a clip. But what's different about highlights is it's just raising the whites. It's not actually moving my histogram. With, when I move my whites in my histogram, my histogram actually moves. You, and let's follow this green little curve here. If I raise my whites, we're gonna see that green start to move to the right, especially as we get a lot higher. Let's put it back. Now I'm gonna put my highlights back to normal. Here's my green curve here. Let me raise that. It's not moving as much because with the whites, that's gonna actually move my histogram. My highlights are just gonna raise those values. Now, of course, as they're becoming raised, they're gonna move closer to the right to get closer to the clipping, but I'm not actually moving my white point. So when you move your white point, everything gets brighter, and we're actually moving that part so that more things are just have more white, and the more the white is more pronounced. While the highlights will go ahead and just increase the brightness of everything that's white. Shadows happen the same thing. If we lower our shadows, you can see we're not really moving our histogram so much this time. We're just kind of changing the values and making things darker. So that can be important to remember that whites will actually change the white point, move where, move your histogram where it is, while highlights and shadows will just either raise or lower those blacks wherever you are, but you will still get clipping on using the whites, the shadows, the highlights, or the black point. All right, so that's basically the light, and that's easy to go around and mess with. And since these are just sliders, just moving them around. You really can't mess this up. And if you do, you can just reset it and move around. But it just takes some playing and getting used to it. But the most important and crucial thing is don't lose that detail in there. Don't let things clip. Once you do that, that's when you've messed up. With everything we like say, the grain of salt, if it's the aesthetic you're going for, it's fine. So finally, the last thing on the light I want to talk about are curves. Now in our curves, you'll see that we have these two that are kind of gray, this kind of funky looking S, which is a tone curve. I click on that. And to the right, I have a point curve and then I have my colors on the right. We're not gonna deal with those. So point and tone curve, what are they? Well, they're essentially the same thing. They affect the highlights and the shadows in a certain area. So let's go ahead and go to point curve, right here, what I have, and that's just a straight line with that. So the point curve is something that I can manipulate freely how I want. And what's awesome is by looking into it, I can see my histogram. If I look up at the histogram that I have up there in the top right, I can see that it pretty much matches up with that. And so this is what's important to see a, a visual idea or understand how histograms work and what they're showing. Because with a point curve, if I click anywhere on this line, I create another point. And in and of itself, that doesn't do anything. I just made a point. But now, when I adjust, I take this middle one here, if I push it up or slide it around, if I'm looking at my histogram, on the top right, what I'm seeing is how it's affecting it. I'm gonna lower this down, it's gonna kind of push everything to the left because I'm focusing more on the shadows, push it up, focus more thing to do on the right with the highlights. But if I raise this up, we can see that it does make a little bit of a curve on the, the far right wing, it's the left and the right side, but not so much, it's really just mostly affecting this middle parts in here. So that's what it is. By using these point curves, I can adjust different parts of it. So rather than going to my slider, sliders and sliding my whites and my blacks and my highlights and do my contrast, the white part of her nose in the background, it's, it's so bright and I don't want to affect too much of it. I just want to move it a little bit. Well, I can then make a bunch of points here um, and I can kind of do it and create a curve. Awesome, I can click on these double click on them and they will go away. So let me do that for these. But I wanna keep two on those middle points essentially. And so now you can see how that affects the middle. Let's talk about the outsides. If I do the top right here, by affecting the whites and the highlights, if I just move this down, it's becoming this kind of faded look because with a point curve and a tone curve, I'm essentially talking about the tones of the whites in there. So by moving it down, I'm giving them more of a kind of, more of a, I wanna say more of like a black kind of filter look. Same thing if I go into the bottom left and I raise up my blacks and my shadows. Again, it's very, that's very faded. Everything's kind of more neutral now. If there's no bright contrast or dark contrast, it's like, yeah, you're, you're, you're making your whites more black and you're making your blacks more white. So it's gonna, if I just had a straight line, it would just be a neutral color, it'd be gray basically. So let me move this down and I'll do the other way. I do kind of what I call like an upside down S. And it becomes this really funky thing because now you're, you're almost inverting things 
because you're really moving things where they shouldn't be and you're clipping everything. Like you can look, look at my history on the top, the top right. I have very little contrast. There's a little hump in the middle, but most things are either very low down or on the far right, they're starting to clip. Now we have an idea of point curve. I want to click on tone curve here. And what tone curve does is it's kind of an easier way to mess with the point curve. If you want the software to kind of help you out and to kind of give you a guideline and places to start and stop, I click on things. I can see I get this kind of like wave that appears over my parts of my line where my little cursor is with the dot. So if I click on something, if I look on the bottom right, I, can, I have shadows, darks, lights, and highlights. Well, if I click somewhere, I can't move it left and right. I can only move it up and down. And so if you look at a histogram on the top right, we can see how we're affecting it. Essentially, we're doing almost the same thing we would be doing in our point curve, but this gives us a little bit more, I don't want to say a handicap, but it's kind of more of a helping hand that the line's gonna stay straight and when you just move this, we can move this up and down rather than having to put points on certain places so that the line stays straight. So this is where you can go, that if you don't really wanna mess with the point curve and you're getting started, you're gonna do this. You wanna just make like a nice looking S, and we'll raise this, lower this, and maybe adjust the middle a little bit. And that can be a way you can kind of get started. Definitely just kind of a helping hand when it comes to the point curve. You do have these sliders on the bottom here, and this is where you can kind of adjust where those points are, where it kind of changes from shadows to darks to lights. But ultimately, kind of keeping them on the lines makes the most sense, just moving this around to kind of get the look that you're going for. Okay, friends, thank you for checking that out. Tutorials definitely are longer than you think they're big. I was hoping this would be like three to four minutes, just like briefly going over it, but you go so in depth sometimes, you kind of just talk. <laughs> it's definitely a lot longer than I thought. That's what light is. Definitely give me comments or questions that you might have. I'd love to answer them. About talking about light, did you use the app? Did you use it on the computer? Are you using the classic version of Lightroom? And they function the same, they just look different. All right, friends, thank you so much for checking in today. I definitely hope you liked that tutorial. I will have a lot more tutorials on Lightroom coming out because I'm spending a lot of time in it. I definitely want to just kind of give my experience with it uh, as a new photographer that's really kind of learning the ropes and getting into it because I feel as though you can look at someone that knows a lot and they have a lot to say, but sometimes it's always good to get a perspective of someone that's new to a, a certain thing and that knows what's happening for the most part, but kind of, you know, wants to explain it away because it was kind of confusing when I was learning it. But anyways, friends, thank you so much for checking in today. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Peace. Well, okay, everyone. So sorry for this jump in time. I'm sorry if the scene looks a little different. I finished this video. I was done. It was cool. I went to lay down, took a little nap. And during that nap, I had this revelation. I'm like, this would be great to explain something about lighting in photography. When you look at histograms, an easier way to look at it is that black, true black, 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 it's gonna be zero. That's zero. And then a hundred is gonna be the whitest of whites. Completely no detail, just white. No detail in the black, just black. So black is zero, when white is 100. And on that scale, everything else in between is gonna be a different level of the lights. I'll say the amount of white in the black. So in a way, light is just gonna be the color white in your pixel. With that said, Whenever you're looking at adjusting exposure, your highlights, your shadows, always think about it when you're changing your slider, especially with exposure. By raising that exposure up, you're raising the value of the lights across that entire spectrum. So from zero to 100, let's say you raise the exposure up one, that zero now has become a one. So even if you go all the way down, it's still gonna have some lights. That's not exactly true, but think about it that way, especially when you're gonna be doing highlights and shadows you're raising the value of the white. So you have a white that's at 70, but you wanna get up to 80, you raise that highlight because it's gonna raise that part up and not necessarily affect so much on the bottom of the spectrum. Or when you're doing with whites and blacks, you're basically shifting where zero and one starts on there. So I hope that kind of helped explain When you have a slate, like this is the coolest idea ever, this is brilliant. Um, I don't know how well it is in practice, when you think about it that way, that exposure and lighting, it's just a scale of zero to 100. And then when you're in, by adjusting your sliders in Lightroom, you're just adjusting that the values of that and of each pixel, which what's lighter, what's darker. Now back to whatever part of the section I've cut into right now. Ooh.